Okay. So, danke schön. Test. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you very much. My name is Paul Blickle, and I'm infographics designer slash data visualizer at Zeit Online. And Zeit Online is a German news website. It's uh, the sister publication of Die Zeit, uh, which is a weekly printed newspaper. And um, yes, Zeit Online has its own newsroom with about uh, 100 employees. And uh, it's equipped for fast delivery of uh, news and uh, background insights. And uh, yes, uh, we have uh, 10 million readers by now. And that also means that we have a quite vivid readers community. And if you have been here yesterday already, um, those of you who uh, went to the session with uh, Martin Kotinek, our um, editor in chief, the deputy editor in chief, and uh, Christian Hanke from Eden Spiekermann, um, those of you uh, got to know our product a bit and also learned that we had a a relaunch and a redesign, not, not even half a year ago. Now back to me, I'm a part, uh, I'm part of, of the team Interactive. Um, and many projects that we work on are um, midterm and long term, which means uh, from, from three days to several weeks of uh, production time. And of course, they run in parallel to um, yeah, daily business. And uh, at Zeta Online, we, we, we love to tell stories, um, not only with text, but also um, with, um, with uh, other visual elements, uh, like good photography or videos or uh, charts and diagrams. And uh, the team interactive is there to help telling stories with infographics. So the team interactive is available to the whole editorial office, which means that we also have, uh, you know, we, we work very closely together with uh, editors from the whole newsroom, from all departments, which also means that we have so many different topics that we work on. And uh, I, I'd like to just mention a few, which is, for example, how our fellow Europeans, uh, Google Germans, um, this was done uh, uh, during or in uh, preparation for uh, the uh, Europe, European uh, election. Or, uh, for example, um, insights into the military or climate data, then what our uh, members of parliaments are doing, um, the results from long term studies, um, yeah, reconstruction of crimes. Uh, migrants' deaths in the Mediterranean Sea, Olympic medals, um, religion, and uh, yeah, don't worry, I'm not, not. This is not an endless list of uh, screenshots, but I'm. So the, my intention here is to to show you that we have so many different topics, and that we also have uh, accordingly many approaches how we um, yeah that we take to to make. Uh, our visuals, and uh, I can speed up a little. This is bakeries, Germany's next top model, soccer, antibiotics resistance, railway bridges, doctors again. Um, no, it's doctors first time. Um, again, Olympic medals, doctors, and uh, right-wing attacks. So you, you get the picture. It's really quite diverse. And um, these uh, three stories um, are about Apple. German reunification and um, deportation. So, and I would like to uh, introduce you to those today. And uh, um, I chose these because they also give you a very uh, good insight into um, the different ways of how we can tell visual stories and a very different, three very different ways of, uh, yeah, infographics, the role of infographics. So I'll start with an investigative story about Apple. And a colleague of our team, investigative slash data, um, he wanted to find out how many billions of euros actually Apple is owing to the uh, European Union or Europe. Um, 
because it's not paying enough taxes. And uh, he did some calculations, and when he found out, he came to us and told us about that number. And he also told us about the, yeah, his, his, his research. And it was so interesting, every single step that he took in the research, that we thought, okay, we might just want to, you know, show all of these steps to the reader. And this is what we came up with, a step-by-step -step explanation of these rather complicated calculations. Um, first, some basic numbers about uh, sales and profits. Um, and then, how, how Apple is increasingly becoming dependent on the iPhone sales. And then putting these numbers into perspective. And in the next step, picking out the numbers for Europe, um, which is uh, 34 billion euros in profits just between 2010 and 2014. And yeah, then we introduce the tax rate, which is 27% uh, uh, on average for smartphone sales in Europe and which uh, yeah, results in 9 billion euros in taxes for Apple in these five years. And then in the next step, we show how, you know, how well-behaved European companies are actually and pay their taxes. And um, yeah, it turns out that Apple owes Europe around 8 billion euros in tax income, iPhone only and for, for a time frame of five years. So, but what are 8 billion euros? So, um, we put that also in perspective. We'll have a look at what Europe could do with it. It could rescue refugees. Uh, it could fight uh, youth unemployment. And um, funniest thing, it could buy uh, iPads for school children. And yeah, then there's this disclaimer. Uh, which is quite long, but it's uh, <laughs> sorry for that. But it's really good that it's there because it's it delivers many details to to the skeptics, and we have those among our readers. So, and uh, yeah, guess what? Um, when you when you search for Apple in Europe and tax today, then you you read about um, you know here January mid of January, there was, uh, there was a publication of, uh, of the European Commission, uh, and they have worked out the number of $8 billion. Uh, it's a bit different, but it's quite close to what we got, and, and I'd say it's, it's more than 30% correct in this case. <laughs> so, and we got our number four months earlier. That's also very, very important. It's, so next up is A Nation Divided, something we published uh, in 2014 when Germany was celebrating 25 years of uh, when uh, the, the wall fell. And um, yes, um, so we found this picture uh, in our Twitter timelines, and we found it again on, on the ESA website. And I can quote from that website. This picture was taken by ESA astronaut Andre Kuipers from the International Space Station. The former division between East and West Berlin can be seen. The yellow lights correspond to East Berlin, and the greener tones show West Berlin. Over 20 years since the Berlin Wall was dismantled, the effects of separating the city can still be seen from space. So the projection, it's a bit hard to see. but. Um, can, can you maybe see where the wall was um, already? If not, I can help you. These are, these are the four sectors that uh, were there for 40 years, uh, 41 years um, when Germany and Berlin uh, were, were separated. And you have the, the, the French and the, the British and the American sector on the left, and on the right there's the, the uh, Soviet sector and the GDR surrounding it all. And I can go back. So can you see it now, the different colors? Oh, so, wrong one. So, um, 
So, and, and when we saw this for the first time, we couldn't stop staring at it. And, and, um, and we thought, can't we find statistics and uh, visualize them and statistics that show um, the effect of separating the whole country uh, for, for over 40 years? And um, yes, we collected dozens of data sets and then we selected those that still had the east-west German divide. For example, the income is higher in the west and there are many more Ronnies living in the east. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, farms are bigger in the east. Uh, West Germans have more guns and RVs. So, and we mixed those statistics um, with uh, photos and videos. For example, this photo video combination um, of places then and now. So I didn't capture the sound, uh, but it just imagined some uh, nice music. <laughs> and uh, yeah, also other types of infographics. And these maps, they, they work as beautifully as the picture taken from space. And um, there's this, this border that becomes visible even without uh, tracing it, because the, the the maps, they only con uh, consist of colored dots. No, no overlays there, no, no other way to interact with it. Yes, East Germans say broiler. Don't know why that is. Um, okay, I might just pause this because I went too quick when capturing it. Uh, over here, we included first division teams in Eastern Germany in the soccer league, although there's not a single one. We did that just for fun. Uh, yeah, microwaves are a bit more popular in East Germany. Um, and there's this another fascinating video that shows example of, um, yeah, where you can still physically see um, remains of the inner German border uh, in, in Google Earth. Yeah, lots of people involved, but that was okay, because it was very so successful. And, um, <clears throat> The third example I'm showing is, um, is also in English, and you might be wondering why that is. And the uh, short answer is, um, if we are convinced that there is an international audience for that one topic, then, then we translate it. Um, so this one is about the elaborate uh, practice of, of European countries um, called joint return operations. It has nothing to do with uh, drugs. And, but it's, um, in other words, it's, it's flying people back to their original countries when, they, uh, when their uh, seek for asylum has been turned down. And we took data from all flights that were co-organized or co-financed by the uh, European Border Protection Agency Frontex and showed them in two layers. The first layer just shows the, the amount of flights that there were in one year, 2014. And if you look closer, you can see already the number of deputies and staff. And this is the second layer um, where you can see much more information about each flight, like the, the route or the costs. Or in some cases, we also have the airline because um, these flights, they are just charted machines that we also fly with, which is really, yeah, which is quite fascinating when you hear it for the first time. Um, yep, 
yeah, click, you can click through all of these and um, this might have been a bit quick because I know how surprising this is from, from, uh, from the topic. I mean, um, there's so much in it that I didn't know before that at all. And for example, that deportation is taking place so often by a plane and that there's so many people involved uh, like, for, for example, that there's so much more staff flying with, uh, 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 with those planes and um, that it's being uh, so well organized between different countries from Europe and that it's also, um, you know, being paid by the tax uh, payers and that it's also happening with, uh, uh, with the charted machines from, from airlines we know. So... That, that was the thought that fascinated us the most from all these facts that we learned. And that's, that's also why we decided to, to mimic this seat plan that you get when you are checking in online, like I did a couple of days ago. So I was a bit creeped out, but that was almost the intention that we had. And I bet that from now on, when you check in into a flight, uh, you might be reminded of uh, deportation. So be warned. And so, conclusion. The, uh, yeah, infographics can play a significant role in uh, visual storytelling. Um, and these are my, my uh, three takeaways for you. So keep the interaction simple because um, the readers will thank you when they can focus on the content and are not distracted by a complicated navigation. And yeah, and the second thing is for your uh, most valuable stories, really take your time for the process of creating an individual look because it's really worth it. Uh, and third thing is make the reader have at least one aha moment or even more like, like a wow moment or, or oh, my, oh my god <laughs> moment uh, or what the fuck uh, but uh, that, that's, that, what, that's what you have and, and make, make it last because when it makes click in your brain it stays there longer and if you that's what I that's what I uh, that's what you what, I, what we intended with our seed plan um it lasts longer. And, uh, well, if you, if you ever are very uninspired, this is our landing page, zde slash ddj, which stands for data-driven journalism. That's where we collect our, um, yeah, our biggest projects uh, with, uh, with data. Or follow me on Twitter. Thank you very much. Fertig.